Let's take a look at trigonometric ratios. Specifically in this case, we're going to look at sine, cosine, and tangent. <clears throat> First of all, we should know the definitions of each of those. The sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and we're talking about the lengths of the sides. The cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, a way to remember these things, we can use the words, or the word, Sokotoa. And if we take the first letter of each of these pieces, we'll get that. So, S, oops, excuse me. Let's get a smaller size here. S, O, H, so sine, opposite, hypotenuse, and then cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and then tangent is the opposite over the adjacent so if we put that all together we get S O H C A H T O A Sokotoa that uh, has always helped me to remember the trigonometric ratios and, and which things go together. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at how they can be applied. First of all, let's say we want to find the sine of angle A in this triangle right here. Well, the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, when we're talking about opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse, well, first of all, these only apply to right triangles. So first we should look for this little box in the corner that tells us it's a right triangle. Then imagine yourself standing in the angle that you're talking about. So if we're working with angle A, imagine you're standing right here. The hypotenuse is always going to be the side that's opposite the right angle. So if we're at the right angle and looking out, then it's this side right here. That's always going to be the hypotenuse. The adjacent and the opposite sides, however, those change depending on which of the angles we're working with. So in this case, A, the opposite side is the one that we can see if we're standing in angle A and looking straight out. It's the one that we can see straight across from there. So in this case, it would be the 12. The adjacent side is the one that we could touch. So adjacent means right next to, and this side, the adjacent to angle A, is the 9 one. So if we're working with angle A, and we want to find the sine of angle A, let me change colors quick here. Sine of angle A would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite is 12 and the hypotenuse is 15 so 12 over 15 we can simplify that if we want divide top and bottom by 3 to get 4 over 5 now what if we want the cosine of angle A cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse so the side that's adjacent to angle A in this case is 9 so we'd have 9 on top and the hypotenuse is still the same, that's 15, the one opposite the right angle. Again, we can simplify if we'd like, it would be 3 fifths. And finally, the tangent of angle A, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite of angle A is 12, and the adjacent to angle A is 9. So again, we could simplify that, divide by 3 on top and bottom we'd get four thirds. Don't change it into an improper fraction. We just, or excuse me, to a mixed number. Just leave it as an improper fraction. <clears throat> okay, so we did the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. Now let's look at the angle B. If we wanna do each of those for angle B. Let me just change colors here. And first we'll do the sine. So sine of angle B sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse so now we're at angle B so we're sitting right here okay opposite side in this case is going to be the 9 so 
we've got 9 over, remember I said the hypotenuse never changes, that's the one across from the right angle, that's still 15, so 9 over 15. can simplify that if we'd like, get 3 over 5. The cosine of angle B, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the one that we can touch, that's not the hypotenuse, as we stand in angle B, would be the 12 right here. And over the hypotenuse, which is 15, so 12 over 15, simplify by dividing by 3, we'd get 4 fifths. And finally, the tangent of angle B, that would be the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite side from angle B, just shoot out here. And we've got 9, so it would be 9 over the adjacent, which is 12. Simplify, and that gives us 3 fourths. Okay, now you say, wonderful, what do I care about that? What can we do with it? Well, what we can do with it is we can use those ratios to figure out the angle measures given the two side lengths. So for example, if I wanted to find the angle measure of angle B, I could use any of these three, and that would give me the angle measure for angle B. Let's take a look uh, at how we would do that. I'm gonna have to use a calculator on this one, so let's pop up our calculator. And if you're using your calculator on uh, the computer with Windows, you will wanna go to the view and choose scientific. That gives us a lot more options. And then here we find we've got our sine, cosine, and tangent sitting right down here. All right, so let's just use the sine because it's the first one. So the sine of angle B equals 3 fifths. All right, so we've got 3 fifths. So we're just going to pop that into our calculator. So 3 over 5. It's going to give us a decimal, of course. And to find that angle measure, we're going to use the inverse, because we're kind of going backwards here. We're going to use the inverse, which is right here, so click that, and then the inverse sign. Click that. And we get 36 point and a whole bunch of decimals. You'll find when you're working with sine, cosine, and tangent, you're going to get all kinds of decimals, so just get used to it and uh, make sure your rounding skills are in uh, good shape. So let's just round to the nearest tenth. So it would be 36.9 degrees would be the measure of angle B. 36.9 degrees. Now we could also have used the cosine. Let's just take a look at how that would work here. If we use the cosine instead, that's 4 fifths, so we're going to pop that in. 4 divided by 5, 0.8. We're going to take the inverse, cosine, hey, there it is, same thing. And also, we could use the tangent. The tangent in this case was 3 fourths, so 3 divided by 4, 0.75, take the inverse tangent, sure enough, the same. Now, you're like, well, we can use all three of them to get the same thing that helps us in that we're not always going to be given all these things. So as long as we're given two of the sides of the triangle, we can use one of these ratios to figure out what the, the measure of that angle would be. That's why we have the three. There's actually three more if you want to get, to get into it. But um, that's why we have the three because we're not always going to be given all those measures. Now, sometimes we're going to be given the angle measure and one of the sides and asked to find some other sides. We can do that as well. Let's take a look at this one. We have, we're given that this angle measure is 35 degrees. We're given the side over here, which is the opposite of it, and we're asked to find the x and the y. Let's start with the x, and I'm just going to change colors again here one more time. We're going to start with the x side. So we've got, in this case, the opposite. And the x is the hypotenuse, because it's coming out from the right angle here. So we've got the opposite and the hypotenuse. Which one of our trigonometric ratios deals with the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, that would be the sine. So 
we've got sine of 35 degrees equals the opposite, which is 13, and the hypotenuse, we don't know, so we just put a variable there, x. Now, we can find the sine of 35 degrees. Let's pop up our calculator again here and find it. So in this case, we're just going to put in 35. Don't need to do inverse this time, and we just hit sine. All right, big long decimal. Let's just take three decimal places. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, that would be, of course. And this would round to 0.574. So the sine of 35 degrees is 0.574 equals 13 over x. Now, we can solve this just using our algebra skills here. And I'm just going to take cross products. So multiply across, we get 0.574x equals 13, because we just multiplied across. Now we're going to divide by 0.574, both sides, of course. And we end up with x equals in my calculator again, 13 divided by 0.574 gives us 22.64. Let's just round it to the nearest tenth, so it'd just be 22.6. So side x in this triangle is going to be 22.6 feet. Okay, now let's find that side y. Again, we're going to use our 35 degree measure in that corner, and the y side in relation to that 35 is the adjacent side. So, adjacent, and what is the other one we have? Well, we could use that one if we want, but let's just use the 13 because that's what we were originally given. That's the opposite. So, we have the opposite and the adjacent. Which of our ratios deals with the opposite and the adjacent? Well, that would be the tangent. So, Let's go ahead and use the tangent. Set up our equation here. The tangent of 35 is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is 13, over the adjacent side, which is our y. Now, tangent to 35, we'll need to grab our calculator here. 35 and we find the tangent is 0 0.700 to three decimal spots. That two will just drop that stuff off. So it's just 0 0.7. 0 0.7 equals 13 over y. Again, we can do cross products. That would get us 0.7y equals 13. Divide by 0.7 on both sides. And we end up with y equals... 13 divided by 0 0.7, 18.57, so around to the nearest tenth, we'd have 18.6. So the measure of our side y would be 18.6 feet. All right, so that's how we can use trigonometric ratios in right triangles. You remember that uh, Sokotoa? to help you remember sine, cosine, and tangent. We can use them to help us find the angle measure if we're given two sides, or if we're given the angle measure in one of the sides, we can find the lengths of the other two sides in the triangle. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.